Greetings my friends, how are you doing? This is Zeb from Zed Outdoors and I hope you're having an awesome day. So today I'm with a good friend of mine, Peter Kovac of Soulwood Creations. Peter, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Right, so this video is part of a mini two-part series on carving knife handles. Now, if you're not familiar with Peter, Peter is a full-time professional tool maker and green woodworker. And we're here in West Yorkshire where Peter is now based. Peter is originally from Hungary, having been in the UK for many years in London, and now settles down with his family in beautiful West Yorkshire. So, this, in this video in particular, we're going to be looking at carving knife handle ergonomics. It's a bit of a mouthful, that title. And what we're going to be looking at is Peter's background and understanding and his own conclusions, shall we say, about what you feel constitutes a good carving knife handle. Now in the second video accompanying this mini series, what Peter is then going to do is actually teach you step by step how to take a raw piece of wood and end up with a finished carving knife handle. So this is more the theory and the second part is the application of that theory. So if that video is already out by the time you're watching this particular video, then the links to that will be in the description. Now just prior to this, what I did film with Peter is a tutorial on how Peter carves a spoon. We went through the entire process from start to finish. Peter's a very accomplished green woodworker, carves some amazing creations. So if you haven't seen that video, a link to that will also be down below. So Peter, with your kind permission, I thought we could get started. Let's do it. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the rest of this video where Peter Kovac of Soulwood Creations is going to be talking about carving knife handle ergonomics. So Peter, in terms of beginning the video, I think it's important to touch on your background experience and how that leads into your understandings, your findings about carving knife handle ergonomics. So do you want to talk a little bit about your background itself? Um, yeah, so I'm a trained furniture maker and after I came to England, I completed a furniture and product design course. So I do have uh, well, a deep understanding, I think, of uh, how to make furniture, how to work with seasoned wood, and following that, I have a quite a, probably a good idea of the design principles and also how to approach these sorts of problems with a methodical mindset, which, uh, you know, that's what I really thrive in, this kind of problem solving, understanding the problem and how to solve them. And in terms of the, obviously we're going to go into the actual understandings now, in terms of the ergonomics. Um, I think it's important to touch on that everything you discuss and share in this video is strictly your own opinion. Yes. So these are all my findings and what worked for me, obviously my... So the ergonomics is all about an object reaction to this kind of relationship with your body and obviously all of our bodies are different so I'm really tall, I've really got long fingers so maybe what's worked for me not necessarily works for you but um, I think I find something that could be universally applied for all of us and if you can take away some useful tips that just benefits all of us. And I think it's also important to state that you actually do handles for a living. Yes, yeah. Right? So, you have, so yeah. you have a lot of customers around the world um, so no doubt you get your own feedback and obviously these are tools that people are using, aren't they? Yes, yeah, and you know, I have mostly positive feedback on it and um, I'm trying to, you know, hit that really happy medium that, that people with different abilities and, and, you know, body proportions, they are happy with the, with the product I put out. So I'm trying to pass this on to all of us. So in terms of the discussion at hand, where would you like to begin? Well, I think it's... Um, it would be nice to start in a, in a chronological order, in a way. Um, as you might can see, as a, I'm a massive uh, tool hoarder, but it's only for research, so I'm doing it for the good cause. Um, so, in the beginning of my carving journey, I developed um, a tendinosis in my hand because, obviously, excessive strain um, strain on my in my hand. Um, that's due to so I was using the the standard Mora knife as everyone else does on in, most of the time in the beginning of their journey. And um, what happened that because it's a really small size of it uh, and it's really a rounded handle, I was gripping it extremely hard to to keep our fat like to keep it steady. Uh, and what happened over time that it's it's ended up my all my tendons in my hand being inflamed, so it's causing me extreme pain, and I couldn't carve for a while. So because of that, that's the only reason. One of the first reason I started on this journey of discovering what makes a good uh, knife handle or a tool handle in general 
So I was trying to um, discover what's the reason, what makes a big difference. And one of the things, first of all, I found that is the strengths of the grip you're using, so how much of a force you're applying while gripping the tool, that makes one of the biggest difference in terms of uh, fatiguing your hand. So the more fatigued your hands become, the, the more strain becomes on all of your muscles and tendons and everything. So reducing that, and one of the first solution I kind of came up with is um, uh, increasing the size of the handle. Um, and the second one, which I thought made a huge difference is after my discussion with Lee, uh, Lee Stofer, that um, applying facets to your handles. So the main principle is that that because it's being a rounded handle, to you need, in order to keep it nice and steady, you need to grip it quite hard, and it's still prone to rotating your hand. If you look at this, well, um, these are basically all of these joints in, and uh, how the muscle and skin arrange. It basically creates kind of natural facets on your hand. Um, so basically following these principles and ideas then move on to adding facets just even just to a, a smooth rounded handle like this can really increase uh, the grip uh, you can get so the strength you need to grip the tool. So this one was one of my first um, iteration of what makes a uh, an improved knife handle. So you can see if you compare the size, it's drastically increased uh, and also added facets to it. So I think if we just take this for a second and, and I will try to talk you through it, what was the design process on this. So some of the features on this knife is uh, what's most visible is obviously the facets added. Uh, and the second one is this finger guard. So the finger guard is basically just a, a safety feature. Um, so when you're doing the pull cut towards your thumb, this will be the first place actually you get contact with your finger instead of the blade. So on here, with your with your standard Mora knife, it could be, you see it's quite, even if my knock about this the joint here would hit there, my hand is pretty much touching the blade. So it just gives you a bit of a extra safety precaution and also when you're holding the knife this gives you a really clear orientation of the knife so if I pick up even if pick this knife up even with my eyes closed I can tell what the orientation of the knife is this kind of um, curved section here so you can see there's a big swell and the bottom end and this is really comes to play when I do the chest lever cut so this is just sits in my palm really nicely I can have a really nice firm grip on it and the chest lever grip, uh, grip really just aids in that in that cut to execute it, uh, and the other thing as well that obviously thin it down and cl um, close to the neck of the knife. This is really helps as well to have a, a fine control when you're holding a knife. Most of the time you're doing these standard push cuts, uh, and then having a little bit reducing this distance here really aid you to have that really nice fine control, and then just be able to you know pinch with two hands even. Uh, and then have it. If it's really the distance is really hard, you feel like struggling to have the the right force needed to keep it nice and steady. So I found it when thin down this area here, just underneath where the blade starts, it really helps uh, with the control of the knife. Um, so this kind of design I really stuck with for a while, and I really enjoyed using them. You see, so I've got a few iteration of them. So this one just you uh, with the. Uh, African blackwood bolster. So the reason why I'm do, using these bolster first of all is aesthetically it's quite nice but also if it's a softer wood which is prone to like splitting and cracking this gives a bit of an extra like reinforcement right underneath the blade where it could be a quite a bit of strain. So as you, if you imagine the tongue goes into the handle as you're pushing it into the wood this will be the strain on the back here as well. So it just gives a bit of a you know, reinforcement to it. So African bl black would be being a lot uh, harder than the U, for example. But this made out of um, uh, the whole piece African black wood and just have a bit of a bone bolster, but it's just only for for fancy uh, effects and uh, just make it pretty. And I have a few iteration. And then afterwards, again, following uh, Lee's influence, so he very much influenced my work. Uh, this is like. Um, a take on his um, uh, handle design as well, just to made it into what fit me. This is a really exaggerated uh, handle, so this is for someone with a really large hand. So it really just fills out your palm and you feel like you barely need to grip it, it just fits in there. And again, this big belly is really good, really helps you when you're doing that chest lever grip. Uh, and the same features apply 
the facets uh, for increased grip uh, and then thin down underneath the neck. So this is one of my favorite knife. Um, I've been using it for a long time. You see it's extremely fat uh, on both sides and they're getting really thin down just underneath the neck so you get plenty of control but it gives you loads of grip. I have quite a large hand so this fits me perfectly um, and the facets are really large and bold so it gives you really plenty of grip. Um, and then basically what I've been going with this design for a while and generally you need to scale up or scale down your handle design in regards to the blade and the size of the blade you're using. So obviously this one is a, a Nick Westerman full slice slope blade uh, and this one is a Mora 120 I reckon and it's just a little bit scaled down just to accommodate for the shorter blade. You don't need the, such a huge uh, blade um, handle for the shorter blade because the control would be a lot easier and then you can scale it down to really really tiny if it would be a chip carving knife obviously it wouldn't aesthetically wouldn't work but more likely when you're doing chip carving you really want to have this really fine control just with your fingertips in a way so just grip it with your fingers you barely hold it in your palm you really pretty much never use it chip carving knife so i'm just using this final it's three fingers most of the time to do the chip carving so, so for that I really had to reduce the thickness and overall size so in comparison you can really see how much difference it could make um, and then now it comes to the present time so these ones here are my current handle designs I use um, in terms of what changed compared to like one of the first ones as you can first of all you can see that the end has been chopped off uh, the reason for that is not really for any practical reason but for me for me to make it a lot easier to make so having a facet following this curve down the back it makes it quite complicated to do even on the machine or do it by hand so it requires quite a high precision and a lot of time if i just have it running off to the end and just cut it off it makes it a lot quicker and easier however it doesn't take away from the ergonomics or the use of the knife the other big change is to having this kind of finger guard swell a little bit less pronounced so it does the function exactly the same aesthetic looks a little bit nicer and also easier to make than not having such a curve so and this i think this iteration are really focused on to make it really repeatable really easy to make for me uh, for the tools i have make it really easy to make uh, and the other thing which i will point out just now is when you when you look at how your grip works in general you have two radiuses one on the front here and one on the back so actually the back here is a lot larger radius so when you holding a knife or would be an axe handle as well on the front you would have a lot narrower uh, of a radius or like a point than on the back so when you pick up a knife you can always kind of tell the orientation um, of this knife by just by it's thinning down towards the front to, towards the front um, I'm thinking of making maybe doing a quick drawing of a cross section. Do you think would that be? Yeah, I think why not? Shall we? Let's do that. All right. So because it's just a lot easier to see it. Um, shall, shall we put it put it here? So if we're looking at from the top, the cross section of these knives usually goes two sides. We have a facet or maybe even two facets and then on the front you have a little bit of elongated facet and then a secondary facet so it's quite square-ish looking but you can see the facets on the front they are a lot longer than on the back so it's always going to lead even can be an extreme like on my X handles uh, so then whichever the grain goes so so this will always help you orientate the blade you know which direction the blade facing well you can't tell I'm a product designer can you from these drawings but you know that's not what well, that's what I'm not what I'm known for so this kind of shape it's really helped me to to nail down this kind of what makes a good knife as well because as I'm holding it 
this kind of grip here, this distance, it will be a lot smaller than on the back here. So my grip will be a lot easier to apply force if it's a if it's a narrower distance. If I flip it around, then this distance increasing dramatically and becomes a lot harder to grip. So the most of the time, you, how you hold your knife, when you flip it around, it doesn't really matter because you're kind of pinching between these two rather holding it like this. So um, yeah, so that's where I'm at at the moment and. Um, what I'm trying to do, these blades are forged by Josh over at Greenhaven Forge, which I, at the moment, uh, I have a large batch of and I'm planning on making loads of handles for and releasing it to the public. Um, and what I'm doing now, I'm just really honing in what would be the right proportions for the blades. So for a longer blade, this uh, Sloyd Katana, uh, I would have a lot larger handle, uh, a little bit thicker, a little bit longer, so you have plenty of grip and control. And when it gets to the smaller size, it's obviously reducing proportionately, so it just makes life a lot easier. When it have a really shorter blade, I tend to leave a bit of a longer handle because the point where the, the tip of the knife, this is actually basically using as a pivot point, it's a lot easier to apply more force when you have a larger leverage on the knife. So it's nicer to have a bit of a longer handle and can really apply the force. With the longer blade like this, obviously it goes far away from your hand, so the, the leverage will be quite you know, straightforward because it's the length of the blade but also the length of the handle. So in terms of the next video, where we're actually going to be carving a knife handle from scratch and fitting the blade, um, what shape are we going to be emulating out of all well, the have on the table? Yeah, I think let's do this one, my latest one, because this is what I do. This is where I'm at at the moment, in a way, the pinnacle of my <laughs> knife handle journey at the moment. It's an ever-evolving process, so it might change something tomorrow or the day after. This is where I'm at at the moment and I'm really happy to share so we all can benefit from my findings. And having said that, this, this is basically a result of years of, of trial and error and testing and making you know dozens of handles and, and using them daily. But having said that, all these ergonomics and facets and, and proportions, my favorite knife is this one here. So it's just a piece of um, dogwood branch been drying in my drawer for like 10 years. And I drilled a hole, I carved it a little bit to make it a little bit of a finger guard. And it's just a piece of wood, pretty much unaltered. And I absolutely love it. And this is one of my favorite knife. So having said that, you know, all this talk about ergonomics, ultimately a stick will do, but it's very much a personal journey for all of us. What we prefer, how we prefer, some of us prefer a really th slim knife, some of us really prefer a really thick one. But um, I think it's important to find out what suits you. And then if you can take away one of these tips from me, then benefit you and us. So there you have it my friends, that is a wrap for this part one of the two part series on carving knife handles. Now the second video where uh, Peter is very kindly going to be demonstrating from start to finish on how you too can carve a knife handle similar to the one where he has refined himself. So the link to that will be down below in the description. A couple of other things, I've got a link, I'll put a link below to Peter's website. You can check out his website, Solwood Creations. You can see the myriad of work that he gets up to. I'll also put a link to his Instagram below where there's a gallery of pictures covering what he's done in the past and also what he's doing currently. Like I mentioned, he's a full-time tool maker and green woodworker, so you can see the plethora of work that he gets up to here in the United Kingdom. What I've also kindly done, due to, with Peter's permission, is I've put a link to, I'm going to put a link below down to a blog post that I've compiled accompanying this video with pictures of Peter's knife handles that he's demonstrated um, in this uh, video that you're watching now. All I would kindly ask is as our way of saying thank you, if you head over to Instagram, give him a thumbs up, give him a like, give him a follow. Uh, Peter doesn't need to share this information, but he's sharing it to help many of you out there. So I'm very grateful to Peter, you've allowed That's me right. to do that. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I shall see you on the next of this two-part series. And as always, I hope whatever you're doing, you have a blessed day, a blessed week ahead. From Peter Kovach of Solber Creations and myself, Zed Outdoors, peace out.